Hello and welcome back or to the channel if you are new. In this video I would like to discuss how I got through my first semester of med school at the University of Pech in Hungary. I will highlight what to expect from each subject and share some advice based on what worked for me and what I learned in hindsight. Alright, so it is your first week of your 14 week semester and you are being introduced to Molecular Cell Biology 1, General Chemistry, Biophysics 1, Biometrics 1, Public Health 1 and Medical Hungarian as well as a few other smaller subjects that are of less focus. Luckily the first week is quite relaxed and all the students are just trying to get a feel for what they're in for. You will have a combination of lectures, seminars, which are basically lectures in smaller groups, labs in some subjects such as general chemistry and biophysics one, where you will have labs on a regular basis throughout the semester, and then you'll also have the odd few in biology. Attendance in lectures is not compulsory, so you can use your own discretion. However, I strongly advise that you attend all of them at the beginning, as you'll be briefed on what to expect in each of the courses, and you can also assess whether it will be helpful for you to attend lectures in the long term. Seminars and labs are compulsory and attendance will be taken. Most courses do allow you to have two or three absences per semester, but it will be stipulated to you in the first lecture for each relevant course. Don't put too much pressure on yourself in the first week. Focus on making friends, sorting out any admin that might still need to be done, and also trying to talk to students in the upper years, as those connections will end up being very helpful. From the second week onwards, this is how I advise that you tackle your semester. I believe that the best method is to put your main focus on the two biggest subjects during the semester. This doesn't mean completely neglect your other subjects. Still pay attention in classes and do some review work if necessary, but the proactive focus studying should be pushed in the direction of Molecular Cell Biology 1 and General Chemistry. These two subjects are content heavy and the expectations in the exam are higher than those of the other subjects. I spend most of my afternoons reviewing the theory for biology and then maybe two afternoons per week would be a general chemistry review. These study sessions would be focused and roughly three hours in length with some breaks in between. However, this routine was sometimes interrupted by certain things that come with university adaptation, and that is okay, so long as you remain somewhat proactive. A more important interruption occurred once a week from the third week of semester onwards, and that was the general chemistry pre-lab tests. It is extremely important that you are prepared for these, as you will need to gather a certain amount of points by the end of the semester in order to qualify for the final exam. The same thing can be said for the general chemistry skills tests, of which there were four scattered throughout the semester. The first one was memorization of organic chemistry formulas. The second one was concentration calculations. The third one was equilibrium concentrations. And I cannot remember the fourth one, unfortunately, but I am hoping that the three I gave you can give you an idea of what to expect. The way that it worked in our year was the following. We would have our pre-lab tests before each lab from the third week of semester onwards, and they would consist of two questions. One of the questions would be known based on a piece of paper or a few pieces of paper that were given to us be beforehand that we had to learn and make sure that we studied to be ready for that question. And then the last one would be an unknown question based on the theory that was being taught in the lectures up to that point. We needed to accumulate a minimum of seven points out of 14 by the end of the semester in order to qualify for the exam. I know that it has actually changed recently and sometimes they do change things in this university on a yearly basis. So you do need to pay attention in that first lecture when they give you the information. I'm pretty sure that right now they have it where you can get either a known or an unknown question and it's only one question per pre-lab test. Moreover, you will have a few biology midterm tests. We had two during the semester and then we had one end semester test right towards the end. And if you have been proactive with your studying from week two onwards, then you don't really need to increase your studying too much before each test. It will be based on the theory that you are learning in the lectures, so just keep on top of it. These tests were multiple choice and they were not as important as general chemistry as you did not need to achieve a certain grade in order to qualify for the final exam. They are simply there for you to test your knowledge, give you motivation during the semester to continue your studying, and if you do well enough or achieve a high grade, there is a potential for you to get completely exempt from the final exam. It is rare, usually only about three or four people per grade get this exemption, 
but there are also grades under that, minimum grades that you can achieve, that can give you less topics in the final exam. So it gives you a little bit of extra motivation to study for these exams and keep on top of the theory. Other than those three main distractions, the pre-lab tests, the skill tests, and the midterms in biology, you can very much get into your own study routine. There will be the odd distractions, such as a few other tests and midterms in some of the peripheral subjects, but they tend to only need one or two days to study for. So you can still keep on track to a certain extent. Two notable mentions would be biometrics and medical Hungarian. Biometrics involves statistical analysis and then medical Hungarian involves learning how to conduct a medical interview in Hungarian, as well as learning some of the common answers that patients tend to give so that it can give you some kind of a base to communicate with patients in the later years, at least to some degree. Biophysics has one end semester lab test, but other than that, you just need to focus on learning during the lectures and the labs, which you will have once a week. And in these labs, you will have to fill in a lab book. The hope is that you are able to finish both the lab and the report during the allocated time. But if you are not able to, then you will have to finish those reports at home. In my opinion, your main aim for the semester is to get to the end of the 14th week having got through all of the little tests in each subject while still maintaining a strong focus on molecular cell biology one and general chemistry. This way you should be able to take one of those early in the first week of the exam period, hopefully pass and then go on to take the second one early in the second week of the exam period. This will really open up your exam period and give you five and a half weeks to complete the rest of your finals, which include biophysics, biometrics, and public health one. A little side note is that medical Hungarian and two or so of the other peripheral small subjects don't actually have a final in the exam period. You just finish everything you need to finish for each course during the semester. Now back to what I was saying, if you have five and a half weeks left of the exam period where there are no classes and no distractions, you will be able to learn and study biometrics in about four or five days, in my opinion. Biophysics may take eight or nine days and public health one will take two days maximum. Public health involves a lot of common sense and then you will just need to memorize a few health models and some details in the paragraphs to be ready for that exam. If you do the math, then you will see that you could even finish with time to spare, which is always nice because that means you'll have a longer holiday. It won't always be possible and people do work at different paces, but use that as motivation. Now, before I end the video, let me quickly share what resources I use to study. For general chemistry, I only used the slides that were provided to us in our lectures and our seminars, and it was more than enough to get what I needed to pass each test and the final exam. For molecular cell biology one, I used the past students notes, which have been passed down for many years and have everything in them that you would need. This is why I advise that you speak to students in the upper years, as they are very willing to help and they can then pass down those notes to you. Using someone else's notes can be seen as a risk as you're placing your trust in someone else. But these notes that have been passed down are always from students that have done really well. And the notes have also worked for many students after them. In biophysics, I also made use of a past students notes as well as the lab book, which you can buy from the university library. In the rest of the subjects, I did just make use of the lecture slides or the material that was given to us by the department. However, there probably are past students notes that you could find for those subjects. I'm just letting you know what I used. At the end of the day, it is always better to have a past students notes than to not have them, as that person's already gone through all the effort to summarize all the information that you need, and that can save you a lot of time. If you want to be very secure, then of course you can use the notes, but still refer to textbooks and lectures and fill in some of the gaps or extra information that you find. That being said, it can be very easy to get lost in all of the detail if you refer to multiple sources. So if you do refer to multiple sources, then make sure that you have a strong focus on the most important details. In medical school, you will have a lot to memorize, so it isn't realistic to know everything. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any more questions, then be sure to put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Good luck for your first semester. Go and smash it. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Cheers.